Hello my waxy weirdos. Today I am going to be chatting about what I have learned thus far, if anything, about having a wax melt shop and what I'm going to be changing, if anything, moving forward. As I chat, I will be packaging orders as this is going to be a pack and chat video. And I will also, ooh, juicy little tidbits, I will be playing with little skull samples for four new fragrances that I will be releasing this fall. Okay, so let's get into the pack and chat. What have I learned so far? To be honest, nothing <laughs> to be completely transparent with you all. As a small batch business, the entire process of creating products is a slow and intentional process. The it, it just it requires so much thought and so much planning this whole wax melt and candle thing that there isn't a whole lot of room for error on the technical side of it but um, oh and one thing i'll mention also is given that supplies and raw materials are just so freaking expensive and going up all the time one must really sit down and double check measurements and temperatures constantly so this forces one to really focus on the process and avoid any silly technical mistakes so there isn't anything that i have learned outright of the or from the technical process of doing this because prior to my jumping into the actual wax melt creation process i did quite a bit of studying up on how to do it the do's and don'ts and all of that so i came in pretty prepared now one thing that has been an almost literal trial by fire situation is that this brand was supposed to launch back in february of this year we are in 2023 and it was supposed to launch in february in the spring and it was supposed to launch with candles that didn't work the candle formula I was not happy with, uh, the the wax I wasn't, I just, the whole, the whole candle situation, I just was not completely satisfied with the product and so I decided to pivot to wax melt when the, the intention was to start with candles and then eventually introduce wax melts, but I think this ended up being the better way to go. So what ended up happening is I absolutely did not want to wait any more in releasing products. I wanted my store to open. Summer was creeping up and I thought, oh my God, if summer goes by and I do not open this store, I'm going to kick myself. So I essentially raced the clock to ensure that I had all of my packaging materials, all of my labels, all of the wax, all of the colorants, everything done and ready to go in early summer and we succeeded but it is summer and i live in the desert and it is currently well at the moment it is 101 degrees late into the evening it is past midnight right now that i'm sitting down to film this voiceover but during the day it has been hovering between 116 and 120 that is degrees fahrenheit it is hot it is an inferno and handling wax melts in those temperatures is not as dramatic as most people say you know i watched a few videos and read some articles where people were doom and glooming the wax melts during the summer and i have to say it's really not that dramatic i find that people in uh art communities and craft communities as a whole tend to be kind of dramatic when it comes to these sorts of things and i don't know why but my wax blend i blended it to withstand high temperatures in storage it held up well, it's holding up well, I'm shipping out packages, everything is turning out good. Now, the way the post office treats my packages is out of my hands. If they're bouncing around, if they leave them outside on the sidewalk and they melt, well, I mean, I can't control that, right? But so far, so good, everything has been good. Creating my wax melts in my warm apartment hasn't been terrible, it's been great. I've run into no issues, so yay for that. Uh, let's see here, what have I learned? What have I learned, what have I learned? Uh, if anything, I will say, I have learned to be patient. So again, I didn't discover anything on the technical end of making wax melts, but it's other auxiliary 
opportunities for picking up little moments of learning that can only be picked up from experience. And one of these is that I have learned to be so patient because I am an artist. I have been an illustrator and graphic designer for ages. And I like things my way on my time. And typically, I, if a process is going to take me a while, I accept it and I let it happen. But I like immediate results. That's not to say that I rush any of my processes. No, that's not the case. But when it comes to wax melts, what I have learned, and this is something that I can't speed up, okay? Because when it comes to my illustration, if I want to achieve a certain effect, I can quickly achieve that effect. I can switch a pen, I can switch a marker, and I can, you know, da -da 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 -da, wave my little magic wand and make it happen. But with wax melts, I can't get immediate results with the fragrance. And what I mean by that is the cure time because wax melts need to cure for a few days. Now, some people will tell you that they're ready to go overnight, false. At least with my particular wax blend, that is false. Do my wax melts have a fragrance the day I create them? Yes, absolutely. But given the chemistry, given all of that voodoo that's going on, beyond what I can see in the actual material itself, in the actual wax melt, there's a whole lot of chemistry voodoo going on in there. And at three days, they're starting to smell better. At five days, even better. A week, even better. Two weeks, even better. And I think two weeks is the, the peak standard cure time for most people. But what I have found is that beyond the two week mark, oh man, these wax melts, start to smell outside of their packaging and that that's the sweet spots for me that's that's when i even myself when i make my testers i have to wait i have to wait two to three weeks just to test my testers and that my friends is a pain in the ass when you want semi quick satisfaction when it comes to samples because i spend time developing a fragrance scent blends mixing and doing all that sort of thing and i want to smell it right away and i can't so i'm playing this little game of like tease Ooh, me and my wax are just like ooh, you know naughty little teasy little teasy games here because i can smell it i can smell what it's going to be but i don't get the full effect until you know three weeks damn i mean two weeks realistically but three weeks really is when the scent really comes alive and i can smell it so that's been tough for my impatient behind but it's it's teaching me it's teaching me a lesson in patience and that is a good thing so now i'm having to plan scent releases months in advance which is crazy to me i thought oh i'll be able to plan my scent releases two three weeks in advance now it's going to be about two months two months at least before i can get something out so that was an unexpected little twisty twist but that's okay that is okay in the process of creating a melt shop I knew that there were lessons that could only be learned, and I mentioned this earlier, they, they could only be learned by actually producing the product. And so while I am currently satisfied with the formula that I have, I am absolutely open to playing around and tweaking it and experimenting with other waxes, dyes, glitters, etc. in the future. Now, just to note, my glitters are biodegradable, so I kind of am um, at the mercy of my suppliers who create those glitters. So that's one thing where yes i can experiment but i can also experiment with creating glitter blends eventually because your girl likes to get in there she likes to get her claws in there and get all dirty in the mix and just i just like to have my claws in everything white bat wax is my my new little baby and i'm digging it i've created several fragrances new ones yay yeah that I will be debuting this fall i will have a total of 4 if all goes well i will be able to release all 4 maybe not at once but two at a time so that is something to look forward to uh my packaging my mm, you know this is one thing that again it was a it was a trial by or it was a lesson learned by trial and error my labels are going to be changing with the upcoming release so i'm not changing the design i i like the branding i like the design but the sticker material that i'm using i went with a gloss and I think for the next round of labels, I'm going to go with a matte finish. And this is for, 
not so much aesthetic reasons but for practical reasons i think the gloss looks great it plays with the idea of being glossy wax you know and the glitter and all of that but i'm finding that the labels because i have my wax melt stored and i'm constantly moving things around they do have a tendency to get a little bit uh scratched a little bit you know yeah it's their glossy stickers you know how that is they show every little mark and ding and i think that's just kind of ooh, it's rubbing me the wrong way so just to preserve the integrity of the labels i'm going to be changing to a more storage friendly solution and i think happy accident it may actually look better i may prefer the look of the matte labels when it comes to photographing and video and all that sort of thing so there you go a few little a few little tidbits that i've picked up along the way thank you for hanging out and watching this video if you picked up some wax thank you so much for supporting my little shop this little venture is uh, it's chugging along and it's doing well and i'm enjoying it so so much i am taking off now take a look down below everything you need to know will always be down in that description box links to the shop links to my social media do follow me on instagram if you'd like to see images of my wax lifestyle shots and all of that sort of thing and uh, with that i'm going to leave you keep smelling weird and wonderful my wax heads and i will see you in the next video.